Xander includes our existing advertising business, which is about a $2 billion television ad sales business, television and digital. And uh, we had an internal data project to pull all the data together across all of AT&T. And over the summer, we completed an acquisition of AppNexus. So that's all now rolled up into Xander. So in terms of the, the breakout between TV and digital, what is it now and, and what was it, say, a year ago or two years ago? So the fastest growing part of our business is what we call advanced television. We sell quite a bit of television advertising, but the most popular products we sell are television advertising powered by data using technology to direct advertisements on a household level. So what that means is you and your neighbor could be watching the exact same program uh -huh. and getting different yes. ads within the same content based on the behaviors of your household. So Brian, I've got AT&T on my phone and I use AT&T services on my phone. Thanks for Will being a customer. Will you be able to take what I do on my phone, know stuff about me, and direct things on the television I'm watching because of that. Will you be able to aggregate yeah. all my data from my phone use, who I'm calling, where I'm going, where I've shopped? <clears throat> so some of that we can use, some of that we won't use because of our privacy policy. When it comes to who you call, that's not information that's relevant to how we're going to serve you ads. Mm -hmm. But for example, if you're on a browser on your phone and you are browsing content or you're using DirecTV now, on your phone, we can then use that information to direct ads both on your phone and on your If I go television. to Amazon and buy a blue button-down shirt, will you know that and be able to advertise me on No, TV? in most cases we won't know that. That, that data belongs but to if you, Amazon. But if Walter was looking for blue button-down shirts on Safari, would you know that? <clears throat> Potentially, yes. And what, well, what's there to protect me from you knowing far too much about what I do? Right. So AT&T is a 140-year-old company. We have a lot of respect for our customers, and therefore how we treat data is a big part of our advertising business and our advertising program. And our policy is dependent on us having that relationship, which means customers should always understand how and when we're using data. They should always have choices as to how we use it, and they will have how, controls. How is there an opt-in? Yeah, I mean, even I don't know whether I use Safari to search for right. something. Because if it's you Safari get to know versus it. if I'm looking at Probably something on a, something else. Right. So mo most of the information we get has to do with how AT&T interacts with you, Andrew. So if it's an app, like an AT&T app, if it's DirecTV, if it's other information that you give us right. via being a customer. But do you use brokers? Or you, is, are you... I, I mean, do you use, do you use advertising brokers? Do you, use, um, do you have relationships with Amazon? If I'm searching for something on an Amazon, would that then? We don't have a relationship with Amazon. Might you? Sorry? Might you at some point? Uh, potentially. But, but the policy is the data that we collect from our customers always stays within our systems, and we don't sell data for advertising purposes. But you're not buying extra Unless data from others. Are you buying data from others to supplement your own data? That's yes. always been the big issue. Yes, but when we buy data to supplement what we understand, that's anonymized data, so we never know who a person is. We have a profile in a database that says, not you, Andrew Ross Sorkin, but an anonymous version of you right. likes to watch certain programs on television, you have certain apps installed on your phone, and then we can buy data from brokers to augment our understanding of right. you and serve you relevant Do you actually?